So, friends, welcome to this lecture series of geomorphology. And in this class, we are going to continue this exploration geomorphology in special reference to oil and gas explorations. So, in the last class, if you remember, we are talking about this uh, sandstone body geometry, and we found that uh, different geometry may be characteristics of different geological environment and uh, geomorphic processes. And similarly, uh, particularly this seed type of deposit sandstone body may be a product of many geomorphic processes individually or together. And uh, today we will continue about this uh, porosity and permeability changes and the depositional environment with special reference to the geomorphic processes involved in the formation of this uh, sandstone bodies. So, if you see the porosity and permeability trend of the sandstone bodies are commonly influenced and controlled by the depositional trend which in turn reflected geomorphic influences. So, because we know this uh, porosity that we, we are talking about this delta. In the deltas, this depending upon this uh, geomorphology, the distribution of the geomorphic processes like distributaries, the levees, this uh, delta front, this pro delta and the upper deltaic plane, lower deltaic plane. So, depending upon that, this porosity and the sorting of this uh, grain size or the grain size distribution of a sandstone body it changes. Where closure if sandstone body is affected by folding or faulting, in there the stratigraphic factor may be of minor importance rather than this will be a structural influence because it is structurally controlled, it is faulted, it is folded. So, that the structure plays major role rather than stratigraphy they are. But in purely stratigraphic trough, the sedimentologic and the geomorphic processes or geomorphic factor that is considered with reference to other factors such as regional tilting of the strata and hydrodynamics formation of uh, hydrodynamics of the formation fluid are the additional keys, keys to future further exploration and the similar uh, for the similar accumulation of uh, hydrocarbons. So, you see here, we are talking about the stratigraphic trough. Stratigraphic trough, it is not affected by structure. So, that means, here the depositional environment and depositional environment, it is related to geomorphic process. So, geomorphic process is controlling the depositional environment and depositional environment, it is controlling the distribution of porosity permeability within that sandstone body. So, that means, if we can say this type of geomorphic processes, they are influencing where this porosity will be more, where this is less and something something like that. So, that means, this porosity permeability distribution, this sandstone body geometry that is purely of geomorphic characteristics depending upon the geomorphic environment on which it was deposited. General deposits consist of sand silt and clay fill a valley cut in the river system. The erosional surface dissected by such valleys may be subsequently become an unconformity in a stratigraphic sequence. So, that is unconformity we know this unconformity means uh, it is a phase within that rock body or within the surface within the rock body which are uh, very much important in terms of petroleum hydrocarbon exploration as well as heavy mineral exploration in the heavy mineral exploration too. For large rivers, the channel deposits have large aerial extent and the vertical thickness may be up to 50 meter. But within such river channel, there may be a several hydrocarbon traps in separate sandstone bodies. So, if you see here, both vertical and lateral change in the depositional environment, change in the lateral change in geomorphic process, they create discrete sand bodies. For example, if you see these figures, we have distinct sand bodies, they are vertically as well as laterally. So, that means, individual, individual sand bodies, individual sand bodies is changing laterally, similarly vertically individual sand bodies are changing. So, that means, each individual sand body that may behave as individual reservoir and they are occurring, they occur as isohydrodynamic conditions. So, that means, if it they are isolated, they are called pools and the isohydrodynamic conditions means here if you are retrieving oil and gas that will not affect the pressure and pressure of this, this pool. So, that means, in a geomorphic environment in a like in a uh, fluvial environment, individual sand bodies or coalitions of sand bodies may form and they may behave as good reservoir for petroleum hydrocarbon and um, 
It's not only this petroleum hydrocarbon, these individual sand bodies may be also important in groundwater exploration also. For example, if you see you are talking about this paleo channel cell shallow depth, that means you see it is depth of about 35 meter, this is uh, under in press by Patel at all. Now, you can say here this is a paleo channel and you are looking at cross section. Now, imagine this channel it is filled with water. So, that means for hydrocarbon exploration, for oil and gas exploration, for mineral exploration, for heavy mineral exploration, for sand mining. So, we are getting we are we, the sand bodies are very much important. Whenever a term use the term channel sand, that means it is always of cotton and field origin. So, this cotton and field may be by the same river of different time, may be of different river which is encroaching this river surface uh, this river bed of this former one. So, irrespective of its their origin, if this valley was there and later it was filled with sediment while well, particular the sand, then it is called this uh, cotton field origin that is called channel sand. So, channels which may have been caught into older strata exposed as an erosional surface or into contemporaneous sediments of the same river system such as flood plain deposit may subsequently be filled with sand. So, for example, here this is caught and filled the earlier this deposit was there and it was caught and it is filled by sediment this is caught and filled trigger. Subsequently, if you see another surface it is in this is caught and filled structure. Similarly, here you see this is this is another this is caught and filled structure. So, that means, if we having a channel and it is later filled with sand this is called channel sand. Channel sands are deposited within an alluvial valley or on this upper part of this delta plain. If it is delta plain, this is upper delta plain, that is lower delta plain. So, here we are getting this channel sand. The time lag between cutting and filling within the same river course or branch may be negligible and thus it can be considered at contemporaneous. However, if it is the other river which is encroaching this former one, so that is called called that is an unconformity is there and it is not considered to be contemporaneous. So, further down coming from this upper delta plane to lower delta plane, this lower delta plane if we are reaching here, this distributes from channel like sand bodies by a process of deposition within their own course. So, each distributary following uh, flowing out to sea within this con confines within the river levees. So, now if you see the lower delta plane this yellowed part we are talking about this is upper delta plane and this is lower delta plane. If you see here they were getting the lower delta plane we are getting this natural levees. Natural levee we know that was in the old stage of the river if you remember our fluvial geomorphology classes this is natural levees were formed here and uh, this natural levees their positive geomorphic feature as compared to the river sand. Individual sand bodies filled erosional surface caught by a river may be elongated or may be arcuate depending upon the course of the river. If it is the upper reaches, it is simply a straight line or simply it is sinus type depending upon the individual channels are there. But if you see here in this particular figure, there are number of meanders, they are cross cutting each other and finally, it is forming a channel belt. So, if you remember when we were talking the pod, then the dendroid, then this is channels that is um, dendrite then belt. So, this is channel belt. As the river course undergoes minor changes, these sand bodies may be entirely or partly reworked and may coalescence with the younger sand bodies to form fairly straight and meandering belt up to several miles wide. So, that means, depending upon this process involved and depending upon this frequency of process involved, the frequency of changes lateral as well as vertical changes, the sand body geometry will totally depending upon it. Distinction has been made between the sand bodies formed by fill and of an erosional channel that is the cotton fill structure and those formed by this delta distributed that builds rather than cut the course. So, the delta di distributed is it builds the course and this channel sand it cuts the course. So, both the sand bodies have uh, superficially uh, resembles in this both are narrow 
linear and deposited by river. But on closer examination, this assemblage of grain size distribution, grain gradation, sedimentary structure, paleontological evidences such as fossils. Eh, so, they may distinguish either you are talking about this channel field or the delta, delta distributed system. It is recognized that erosional channels are also formed and filled with sand in shoreline environment too. Not only in this fluvial environment we are talking so far, in shoreline environment also this this environment, this type of deposition cotton field structure occurs. The infilling sand bodies are not point bar deposits, although they may show certain similarities such as grain gradation and planar cross bed stratification. The planar cross bedding is common in estuarine where this development of cotton field deposits of sand is strongly influenced by tidal end movement. So, once the tidal movement is there, will generation of a cross bedding will be there. So, channel sand, if we are using this you terminology sense to stricto, that means it is cotton field structure are deposited by alluvial sediment in a river cut channel. So, that is not that means we will not use that cotton field, so that means channel sand deposit in this uh, delta environment or in the uh, there is river mouth or it is influenced by this uh, tides. So, channel sand once we are used that is sand to tricto, it is used in a fluvial environment only. As such, they consist largely of point bar deposits. So, point bar deposit we know in fluvial environment we are talking something about this point bar deposit. It is started with coarse grain, then it is cross beddings, then finally it will be the planar beddings which are a climbing ripples are developed here. So, this is a particular type of environment, it is found in the point bar deposit the river meanders. Point bar develop along the inner curve of the main loop of this meander of a river as the river curves into the bank along this outer edge of this curve the point bar grows by accretion. So, it is lateral accretion is there. The basal part of this point bar consists of coarse grain fractions of this load such as the coarse sand grit and gravel is deposited adjacent to this undercut bank in the deepest part of this river where this current is strongest. So, we have this velocity of the river um, velocity contours of different as we have discussed in the fluvial geomorphology. If you see here from sea to sea that means in the minder here the maximum velocity will be here and this minimum will be this side. Similarly, in this the maximum velocity is here and minimum is here, but in this straight course of the river you see the velocity is uniformly distributed. So, depending upon the distribution of the velocity which part will be deposited which one will be eroded that will be distinguished. On more gently sloping inner bank of this river where spillover bars and large ripples of medium to fine sands are formed the cross bedded middle point the cross bedded middle portion of this point bar is deposited. The upper portion of this point bar is normally above the river level and it is sediment, the sedimentation occur during flood plants during flooding. So, that is alternating silt and clay mostly are found and their climbing ripples small ripples are developed there they are called climbing ripples. The uppermost bed are essentially horizontal, but also shows small scale cross beddings commonly climbing variety on the small ripples like the, if you see these are the climbing ripples. So, here if you are talking about here we are getting flood plain deposit mostly it is fine grained and uh, some climbing ripples are there and mostly it is flood bedded it is horizontal and uh, here at the point bar mostly if you see here middle to form sand small trough rates uh, ripple structures here trough cross, cross stratification and ripples are there and at the bottom gravel this is called channel lag deposits, gravels, grids, coarse sands that will be deposited here. And here just above it coarse to medium sand with large trough cross beds and at a high velocity and laminations are there. So, as river moves back and forth across this minder belt, it cuts into older point bars deposit and redistributed sediments. This new channel may not cut down this base of this old. Consequently, within a thick alluvial sequence or thick alluvial section, a sequence could be repeated in the whole or part several times, but always in that order. 
So, that means with the migration of this river lateral migration of this river this point bar deposit they repeat vertically and this repetition may be of continuous sequence may be of some part of the sequence is there depending upon this a, a flow velocity depending upon this migration depending upon the flooding frequency like that. This sequence of uh, grain gradation from coarser below to finer above it is characteristic of alluvial deposits and is commonly reflected in the self potential in log which is of a bell shaped. Bell shape means, means you see there are different types of shapes here is box shape this is funnel shaped this is this is bell shaped that means if you see the grain size reduction is at the, the top the grain size is in decreasing and bottom the grain size is increasing so this is of a bell shape so if you see here this is a vertical sequence of a point bar deposit and uh, we are we are getting this channel lag or score deposits then coarse sand then this point bar then this levis then over bunk mad mud so if you see this log sp log so that is resembles to this one that is bell shaped deposit so it is a characteristics sp potential log which is the point bar deposit is looking like a bell shape this shape characteristics of cotton fill sandstone channels deposits commonly shown in marked deflection at the base of the sandstone unit indicating an abrupt erosional contract because as we say it is a channel sand deposit that means earlier it was a river bed there and it was filled with sand so it this bottom part of this of this uh, channel sand it is abrupt relationship with the low lying units with upward decreasing grain size deflection of the self potential curve also decreases to form a bell shape in this case of sandstone bodies of uniform grain size such as those deposited by delta distributary and those that have been formed by the point bar complexes are successive truncations and deposition. The shape of this self potential curve is cylindrical or blocky. So, here if you see here it is a blocky, blocky one similarly it is a blocky one then this is if you see this is a bell shaped one this is a bell shaped one. So, depending upon this positions depending upon the geomorphic environment is involved either it will be bell shaped or blocky shaped. So, in this that means it is a distribution of a grain size it is distribution of a porosity and permeability. The self potential curve given indicator of a permeability because as we are discussing this is first potential is a measure of the permeability of the formation which apart from this effect of the cementation caused by introduction of this calcite or any other secondary minerals and the diagenetic minerals is commonly related to the clay content of the matrix of this original sand. So, that means it is the measure of the permeability only. So, permeability whatever the factors that influence the permeability there is also considered here. In general the coarser the sand the lower the clay content and higher the permeability. Secondary cementation in the matrix and severe, severe, comp severe compaction of the sandstone also will affect the permeability of this formation and this degree of deflection of the same potential curve. So, the shape of this curve it is totally depends upon this permeability which may be affected by clay content may be secondary mineral, diagenetic mineral such and such things like that. The relationship commonly obtained between the grain size gradation and this shape of the self potential curve which contrasts the characteristics of the sandstone of marine and alluvial origin. So, self potential curve it is different for marine origin, different for alluvial origin, for lacustrine origin like that because the porosity permeability is different. This geomorphic processes are different, the depositional environments are different. So, that this geophysical log that can also a merit to distinguish between different type of geological environment, geomorphic environment. So, valley field sand V f for example, here valley field sand overlain by this uh, Huntsman formation of underlain by this J2 sandstone that have both blocky and bell shaped. If you see here this J2, this is J2, it is here, here if you see it is valley field, it is, it is of a bell shaped one, but here the valley field is not blocky one. So, that means though it is sandstone body, seed type of body, but uh, depositional environment deposit 
both cases it is valley fill, but this process of deposition is different. So, that we are getting somewhere it is blocky one, somewhere it is getting bell shaped. So, if you see here both have blocky and bell shaped cell potential curve which reflect respectively a uniform grain size and a gradation from coarser below to finer above. So, here we are getting uniform grain size, but here it is coarser below and finer above, similarly coarser below, finer above. So, that means here these two that we can distinguish these are this uh, deposit by this uh, point bar deposit. In this figure here given a uniform grain size appears to be a little variation in the permeability, although porosity increases toward the base of this sandstone body. In the figure showing an increase of grain size toward the base of this unit, both permeability and porosity increases as indicated by the cell potential curve. In contrast with the J2 sandstone, which originate as a regressive marine shoreline sand, shows a decrease in porosity permeability and grain size towards the base of this sandstone body. So, that means different depositional mechanism, different geometry process involvement that also controls the porosity and permeability. So, that means in turn that will reduce or increase the amount of petroleum hydrocarbon accumulation as well as yield. So, that means it is totally a function of the geomorphic process and the depositional environment with which is controlled by the geomorphic process. Here the main and main oil and gas production comes from this valley fill sandstone units, but uh, some also obtained from this marine shoreline sandstone bodies. In general, alluvial sand in the middle to the upper reaches of this river system shows distinct grain gradations of this point bar type, whereas sand is in the lower reaches, particularly in the delta distributary shows much less gradation and commonly as a fairly uniform grain size. Non-marine sequence might well incorporate conditions suitable for petroleum entrapment, particularly in those areas where these channel sands are more deeply buried in this canyon or troughs. In situations such as braided streams and flood plains, areas is unlikely that separate traps would have formed. So, that means separate trap will be formed if the sandstone body will be isolated like this. But if the sandstones they are coalescence with either like braided systems, Hmm. like flood plains that means separate it is difficult to form a separate trap here. Other, otherwise this will form a dendrite type or it is a field type deposit rather than isolated deposit. However, where the lateral phases change occurs in paludal or this back swamp lithologies, the sands constitute approximately even 20 percent of this total sector a distinct separation of the sand bodies is more likely with of deep entrapment possibility in the meandering channel sands. So, that means here the depositional environment that is more or less it is controlling the hydrocarbon entrapment. Fluvial sediments are known within all sequences from this Precambrian system to the quaternary systems. But oil and gas accumulation in fluvial sediments are known only in Devonian and Younger rocks. That is very important. Though we have fluvial environment from starting from the Precambrian to recent, but those fluvial systems which are formed in the Devonian and the Younger, they are containing petroleum, hydro, petroleum hydrocarbon. Some of these known examples of, of the ancient fluvial sediments have been demonstrated to be the channel sands mainly by this geometry of this sandstone body, sequence of grain gradation, sedimentary structure as indicated by drill hole and outcrop data. So, this fluvial environment can be distinguished from other that done this, this type of grain size, this uh, sortings, this, uh, um, that means um, sedimentary structures. So, like based on that the fluvial environment are distinguished. That's we are talking something about the marine at the river mouth, the river systems, the fluvial systems, the lake system. Let us talk about the delta distributaries in the delta fringe sand. So, patterns of deltas are ephemeral, they change continuously in response to shift in the course of the distributaries, fluctuation in the load of sediment transported to the delta and seashore. Various in the rate of compaction causing uneven subsidence in different part of this delta. These effects of storms and tidal changes, 
the bathymetry of this continental shelf on which the delta is building outward. So, all these factors that uh, controls the delta distributive geometry and the sediment distribution. The dendritic pattern of this classic bar foot delta of this present day Mississippi river has been formed as a result of this shallowness of this continental shelf and comparatively slight variation in the tidal level. So, here this marine geomorphology or the coastal geomorphology is influencing the pluvial systems, but in the Niger delta it is cosmet or arcuate type of delta currently building outward on a very narrow continental shelf subject to large tidal variations within the strong current and waves actions and has smooth curved shoreline of a delta fringe sand. So, that means you see here we have a coastal environment or coastal geomorphic system, we have a fluvial geomorphic system and this is the transitional system. So, whatever the geomorphic processes we are getting here, there is the combination of marine process as well as the fluvial process. So, the dominance of one process to another, dominance of one process on another that will that will govern what type of sandstone geom body geometry will be and what is the porosity and permeability distribution will be. You know, similarly, either the directional variation of the porosity permeability of the sandstone that depends upon this geomorphic processes. So, it is this fluctuation of shoreline, this is the uh, increase or decrease of sea level, this is sediment supply, this is frequent change of the river course, the climate, the tectonism, all these factors that control the geomorphic processes and in turn which are controlling the sand body geometry, the distribution of porosity permeability and in turn which is very much essential to understand the distribution of a petroleum hydrocarbon within the sandstone body. So, in 3D an ever changing delta pattern is only the surface of a prograding lobe of sediment in of irregular outline and variable thickness that is building seaward in response to fluctuation in the rate of sedimentation. So, the rate of sedimentation that is depending on the how frequently or how uh, effectively a delta is growing and similarly that also depends upon the fluctuation of the sea level. So, if the sea level is rising, the sediment which is transported by the river will be at the river mouth, it will not transported on the self edge. So, that the delta building will stop or it, or it will retard. Rivers periodically change course and discharge the load in other part of this delta and successively build a sequence of lobes. These lobes not only progress seaward, but merge laterally to form piles of sediment which themselves may merge with piles of adjacent river to constitute the parallelic facies of a sedimentary basin. Process may or may not be continuous from past to present. So, that means the geomorphic process they are ever changing process. Some process that we have already discussed earlier classes also some deep that means geomorphic process may be it is enclosed by other geomorphic process. For example, in this uh, glacial time this river was hundreds of meter or this uh, sea level was hundreds of meter below and it was mostly dominated by river process, but with increasing sea level this river mouth they are they are submerged with the sea water and now this uh, fluvial system is uh, occupied or it is uh, that means hijacked by this uh, marine process. So, that means these are the ever changing processes that changes with time in space. So, that this, geom this change of the geomorphic process that will control the depositional environment and the depositional environment that will restrict the, uh, that, uh, the grain size distribution, the geometry of this sandstone bodies and in turn which will affect the oil and gas accumulation within that. In the field of petroleum exploration, three dimensional patterns of uh, modern distributary and uh, delta free sand bodies, the geometry of these bodies and their internal features such as sedimentary structures, grain gradation and lithologic variations are much important. 
The spatial association of these bodies with adjacent beds and the nature of these beds are essential for interpretation of these sandstone bodies. So, this lithologic variation, sedimentary structures, grain gradation, internal features, these are very much important to distinguish which type of geomorphic environment we are dealing with. Because our geomorphic environment will lead to the depositional environment. Depositional environment led to the sandstone body geometry, sandstone porosity and permeability, size, geometry, extension of this sandstone body and which in turn will affect our accumulation of petroleum hydrocarbon. That is why the basic idea or the fundamental of this oil and, oil and petroleum gas exploration is the understanding of the geomorphic processes involved for the formation of this sandstone body. And we are talking, once we are talking about this, we are talking about the stratigraphic trap, the structural, because structural trap are later disturbed and the oil and gas accumulation is not due to stratigraphic uh, um, arrangement, it is due to the structural arrangement. So, whatever this is in this class we are discussing, we are discussing about the arrangement of the stratigraphic system. In the lower reaches of a delta bordering the shore, where the surface of the subsiding landmass has been has an elevation at the less than 1 meter above the sea level, the main distributaries flow through the area of Mars. In the channels bounded by levees are commonly higher than the surrounding marshlands, which receives mud and silt during time of flood if when the distributaries overflow their bank. So, we have discussed about this leaf deposit and I think this is the end of this topic. So, we will meet in the next class. Thank you very much.